Good, good afternoon, Ms. Hiralal. Good afternoon, Chief Justice. Did I pronounce your surname correctly? Yes, thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, how are you this afternoon? Um, quite nervous, Chief Justice, but I'm sure I'll settle down. No, you will be fine. The commissioners uh, uh, would like you to be comfortable as, you, as they ask you questions. I'm going to ask you some questions after which I will allow the acting judge president to put questions to you and thereafter the MEC who represents the premier and uh, after that I will allow uh, commissioners who might have questions for you to put their questions to you. I see that you hold uh, the degrees BA Law and LLB. Is that right? Yes, Chief Justice. Uh, both of which you obtained from the University of Durban, Westville. Yes, that's correct. And you obtained your BA Law in 1982. Is that right? That's correct, Chief Justice. And your LLB in 1984. That's correct. And you thereafter served articles with IC Mia, Motala and Company uh, in, initially from May 1985 to May 1986. And thereafter you were, uh, you must have ceded your articles to Halse Haverman and Partners, is that right? That's correct, Chief Justice. Uh, that was June 1986 to October 1987. Yes, that's correct. And uh, you got admitted in 1987 and worked as a professional assistant in at Halse Haverman. That's correct, Chief Justice. And uh, later, that was in 1988, you joined uh, uh, as a partner, you joined Priscilla Jana, Hiralal, and Associates. So you, did you get into a partnership with Priscilla Jana? Yes, that was very brief, Chief Justice. Yes. And, um, uh, but why does it look like that partnership was short-lived? <laughs> June 1988 to December 1988. Um, yes, uh, Chief Justice. Um, Priscilla Jana is my paternal, was my paternal aunt. Mm. And uh, we went into a partnership. Um, being my paternal aunt, um, well, actually, uh, I didn't intend to start telling you about myself now. But I, in my life, have had three mothers. Yeah. Uh, and Priscilla Jana was one of them. And being in partnership with the two of us sometimes were at log loggerheads, although we loved each other dearly. And we yeah. decided she, she as well agreed that I should go my own way. Yeah. Although I did still did the same work. And, and then you uh, became a sole practitioner from January 1989 to 1996. That's is, that, is that right? That's correct, Chief Justice. Uh, after that, did you then focus on CCMA work? Uh, yes, Chief Justice. Or not really? No, it was industrial courts in the 80s and early 90s. Yo, you continue to practice uh, beyond 1996 as an attorney? No. Um, I joined the industrial court in September 1995 while I was still in private practice. Yes. And then um, sold my practice in 96 and continued to do industrial court work until 99, 2000 when the backlog was completed. Yeah. And then I joined the CCMA in 99, 2000. Yes. And uh, when you joined the CCMA, did you uh, become full time at the CCMA? Uh, no, Chief Justice. I, I've you are always been a part-time commissioner. Initially, I was a level A commissioner. 2006, I became a senior commissioner. Yes. And uh, at the CCMA, did you do both uh, mediations, uh, stroke conciliations, and arbitrations? Yes, of course, Chief Justice. And uh, do you continue to be a commissioner at the CCMA? Very much so, Chief Justice. That's where I'm going back next week. Yes. 
So in terms of uh, stopping to have a, a practice as an attorney, when did you stop? I last practiced as a lawyer um, uh, appearing in courts uh, in 1996. Yes, uh, but and, uh, uh, that's something that I need to address. I see advocates for transformation have commented on that. But uh, uh, you emphasize that you last uh, appeared in court in 1996. But did you continue to keep uh, uh, your practice even if you didn't appear in court, or did you? No. Stop your practice. I, I sold my practice and I stopped practicing, but I remained with the Law Society, registered with the Law Society. And in 2015, when my children went into private practice, I joined them. That's when I joined them in the practice. But even then, I still don't do any court work. I don't do any appearances. I only deal with the arbitrations uh, as part of the CCMA, my CCMA work and my... Um, bargaining council and to Kiso work. So I deal with arbitrations other than acting, my acting stance in the high court and in the labor court. Yes. Now, prior to 1996, or as at 1996, uh, for how long had you practiced as an attorney? Uh, that's uh, it's about 10 years. Yes, uh, Chief Justice. Um, from nine, I opened my practice in June 1998 and then sold it in 1996. Prior to that, I did a little bit over two years of articles because I had registered it late. Um, in that time, I did all the magistrate's court work that I had. I appeared in the magistrate's court, um, the industrial court. Um, yeah, all of... Um, I did uh, some civil litigation, and not a lot. Um, ordinary, lit small things, motor collisions, uh, interlocutory applications in the magistrate's court. Um, when I served articles with Mr. Mears' office, um, we were an agency for the Durban offices, so we did a lot of their uh, collection matters and their application court. When I came to work for House Hauptmann and Partners, um, I, um, that's where I got the most experience in civil litigation because, uh, as you'll see from my CV, uh, that firm and the department that I worked in was the civil litigation department, and they did um, uh, a whole lot of insurance litigation. Mm -hmm. And if you recall, um, that was a time that um, Patco was the main service provider and the insurance companies were National Employers General, Santam, and uh, South African Eagle, etc. So I did all of the preparation for trial at that time. Uh, expert witness notices, consulting with counsel. Uh, all of the, the people that I consulted with are now some of them judges. Um, so the preparation that, the experience that I got in the preparation there, Chief Justice, I believe holds me in good stead in my high court work because when the AFT says that I don't have sufficient civil litigation experience, it's not about appearing in court only, it's about uh, knowing what goes into the case itself, all of the preparation beforehand, the discovery. Um, so, but uh, are you saying that uh, at that time you didn't appear in court to conduct trials yourself, civil trials, oh, no. and to argue applications where, uh, whether magistrate's court or I high did, court? I did, Chief Justice. Hmm? I did, uh, with House Huffman and Partners, with the magistrate's court work. I did appear in court in the criminal and civil trials. Uh, when I was in private practice, I appeared in court all the time in civil trials, criminal trials, a lot of criminal litigation. I did a lot of li um, legal aid work. Um, and I appeared in the industrial court. So I have no shortage of court appearance experience. The, so the when, shortage when, comes from 1996 so until now. Or prior to 1996 or up to 1996, you say did you everything. did that. Yes. The time when you, you talk about being involved in preparation for trial but not going to court 
is that after 1996? No, oh, sorry, Chief Justice. Um, that was in when I was serving articles with House Oh, when you were serving partners, articles. And when I, was, uh, when I joined them shortly after my uh, admission as an attorney, I did all of the preparation for trial because those trials were in the high court. If you recall, in those days, attorneys did not appear in the high court. So I prepared all of those trials and appeared in court with counsel and with the other attorneys from our office. But it was not my domain. Mm. The domain in which I appeared in court was a magistrate's court, civil mm. litigation, um, the ordinary, like I said, murder collision, uh, uh, etc. But more um, criminal work, uh, because I got so much of legal aid work, and those days we called it fish and chips court. It was the interlocutory applications in the magistrate's court. Yeah, okay. Um, you said you also uh, sat as a presiding officer in the old industrial court as well? Yes, Chief Justice. Uh, for how long did you do that? For five years. That's from what, 1996 19, until 2000. Oh, okay. By then, the Labor Relations Act was now defunct, but there was a backlog, and um, that's the work that I finished up and then moved on to the CCMA. Yeah, okay, all right. And uh, so in the CCMA, you have been a commissioner since around about when? 1999. 1999. So that's about uh, 22 years? Yes, Chief Justice. Yes. Uh, and you have done arbitrations. You have done arbitrations, a lot of arbitrations. mediations, and yeah. conciliations. OK. Uh, do you have an idea about how many written arbitration awards you have uh, done, recent arbitration awards? Chief Justice, they must run into hundreds a few yes. hundred at least, yeah. um, because as much as I'm a mediator, conciliator in the CCMA as well, yes. I'm often called on as a senior commissioner and with my experience to do the hard cases yes. and the long cases. Yes. Um, in the High Court, you have acted uh, for how long, if you put all the periods uh, together? I, I added up the High Court and the Labor Court, and it comes to 60 weeks. 16. What, six zero. Six zero. Yeah, and uh, yes. Uh, okay, Chief let's Justice. talk about the High Court for, on, or for only for now. Uh, how many weeks have you acted in the High Court, if you are able to say? So that would make it 50. Fif five zero. Yeah, 49 or 50. Oh, you, you have acted more in the lay High Court than in the Labor Court? Yes, Chief Justice. Oh, okay. I would have thought that you would act more in the labor court because uh, it looks like most of your time over the past 22 years or so has been devoted largely to labor, labor work because you said you have been a CCMA commissioner all these years. That's correct, Chief Justice, but I'm an attorney and a lawyer at heart. Yes. And I've always wanted to do yeah. the work that I'm doing at the moment. Um, yes. Civil litigation came to me very easily when I returned in 2017 to act in the High Court. Yes. Uh, are there any cases in which uh, you were an instructing attorney uh, up to 1996 which have been reported? Um, no, uh, Chief Justice, I don't think there are. Uh, okay. But the people that I briefed in those days were uh, a former J um, JP from KZN, uh, Chiman Patel, mm. uh, Advocate Vas Soni, mm. um, Sachi Govender, who's now emigrated. Mm. Um, there was yeah. a female no. advocate, Adharam Singh. Yeah, no, that's fine. We, I just wanted. Uh, uh, the uh, reported judgments. Uh, what uh, is your understanding of the rule of law? Uh, Chief Justice, I'm thinking how to formulate this uh, crisply, as you would say. Mm -hmm. 
um, the Constitution, uh, we have a constitutional supremacy. But for me, I think that uh, if we don't have the rule of law, then the Constitution would really be relegated to a piece of document, uh, to a document. It's the rule of law, um, the, the principle, the founding principle of the rule of law that keeps our Constitution alive. And it's the judiciary that um, is the vehicle by which we, we keep our Constitution and our, our rule of law alive. Uh, it's, the, it's the principle by which everybody is equal in the eyes of the law, and it's the only way we, we keep a social order and there's no chaos in our society. Mm -hmm. And uh, what uh, is your understanding of the doctrine of the separation of powers? Well, that keeps the, the three arms separate. That's where they should be, because you couldn't very well have... Um, the executive or the legislature um, dispensing justice. Um, the judiciary is the entity that dispenses justice and each, each entity should be on its own. There might come a time where um, I suppose the judiciary would have to comment or make judgments on issues that relate to other arms, but that would be where, I suppose, where you have um, disputes dealing with the separate, or the separate organs of state. Um, I recall um, the, the public protector's case where the court, uh, the judgment did suggest that the, ju the judiciary should not step into that arena. So the three entities should be separate. And uh, what is your understanding of the independence of the judiciary? That's of paramount importance, Chief Justice. Um, the, 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 the judiciary has to be clean as a whistle, if I could say that. Um, the, the judges have to dispense justice uh, fearlessly with independent uh, mindedness, impartially. Um, and it's, it's, a, it's the entity by which um, our constitution you can't have a good judiciary, then uh, the constitution becomes meaningless and the, how do you dispense law? Uh, how do you dispense justice? I'm going to now afford the acting judge president the opportunity to put questions to you. Uh, acting judge president. Thank you, Chief Justice. Huh? Good afternoon. Good afternoon, Acting, act, acting Judge President. Yes, I will just ask you a few questions arising from the, the comments by various bodies. Aft is of the view that you lack adequate and necessary grasp of civil and commercial law. What's your view to that? Uh, acting Judge President, um, it's correct that I haven't had, and I've been upfront with the Commission that I haven't done any um, civil litigation or any court work since 1996 until 2017. But I've always been a lawyer. I, l I studied law at the university. I practiced for, um, if you count my articles, uh, in my private practice, up to, uh, I've practiced law for 10 years, civil litigation and criminal litigation. There are many years when I was away from the courts um, did not in any way alienate me from the law. Uh, the work that I do on a daily basis involves so many parts of the law. Um, it's not just a CCMA arbitration that uh, a CCMA commissioner does. There are various principles of the law that would come in and very often we are required to deal with the law of evidence, um, different principles, um, and in, in many ways as well, arbitrations are very much like civil trials. 
It's just a matter of the principles that are being um, uh, utilized in the different uh, processes. Um, in addition to that, in arbitrations, uh, you get a wide variety of the kind of disputes that you deal with. In a misconduct uh, arbitration, you'll deal with um, procurement, uh, um, offenses during procurement, um, assaults, um, theft, dishonesty. So you're called on to draw from the different fields of law in your CCMA work. So I don't see that that in any way um, makes me not suitable uh, for the judiciary. I think that um, if there is a shortcoming in that regard, then the commission must look at the fact that I have many, many years of adjudication experience and arbitration experience, uh, mediation experience, which is so important. Um, it's all good to, to be a judge who's going to sit um, and listen to cases and then write a judgment because what I do see often in the high court is that people come to court saying, I want a judgment. And I actually heard that phrase when I was sitting in a full court appeal with two senior judges where somebody said, uh, senior counsel said, what we want is a judgment. But um, many disputes can uh, be mediated and um, surprising as it may sound, uh, the, the judiciary can learn a lot from an organization like the CCMA, where we have conciliations and arbitrations. A commissioner, whether you are junior or senior, uh, makes a very big effort to try and resolve a dispute before going into arbitration. One would ask, well, in court, how can you, how do you make use of something like that? Don't you suddenly land up with a tainted mind and then you can't deal with your trial? No, if you are skilled and you deal with your mediation attempt properly, you can still deal with your matter thereafter. So there is room, um, Acting Judge President, for mediation in um, the High Court. So my skills, in as much as I've been away uh, from civil litigation, I do bring uh, that kind of skill and my many years of experience in handling uh, parties. I don't have a difficulty with uh, command of the courtroom and control of the courtroom. None of that uh, phases me. I'm very much in control. I have an, uh, a personality which is resolute. Um, I think I'm steering off the topic here, but <laughs> I have an independent mind. I am um, highly regarded in my profession, in my field. May, may I remind you to please be crisp, uh, Ms. Thank, thank, uh, thank you, Chief Justice. Yes. I realize that I am steering off the path. But um, my shortcomings in, uh, a short answer, my shortcomings in civil litigation should not be uh, held against me. Um, I have, I come with a vast amount of experience in other fields, as I've said. And I thought you have uh, really answered the question. Uh, Ms. Herelal. Thank you. Yes. Okay. Continue. AJP. In your view, do you still need any exposure before you're considered for uh, permanent appointment? No, I don't think so, Acting Judge President. I'll, I'll tell you why. Um, the, the cases that I chose when I submitted my application, I had in mind to show the Commission the kind of person and the kind of work that I do that, in, uh, that involves social justice and social issues. And that is why I put in a certain kind of judgments um, for you to read or, or to see what work I do. But when I looked, uh, I was looking last night through the kind of work that I've done in the High Court. I've done uh, commercial contracts, uh, disputes, I've done, and that's, I, I just prepared this last night, if you'll just let me look at it, uh, Chief Justice. Um, Anton Pillar orders, uh, one Anton Pillar order, commercial contracts, one involving the Islamic law, um, liquidations, sequestrations, perfection of a notarial bond. But each one was not a simple dispute. It involved several principles. Um, search and seizure, 
unlawful arrest, spoliation orders, contractual, I said that, procurement dispute, which also was contractual. So although I haven't had the experience, I have the means and I have the ability to research. I know where to find the law, and that's what I did. When I first came in 2017 to act, um, that's what I had to do. I had to research, and I'm industrious. I can go by three or four hours of sleep a night to make sure that I have my work ready and I am I'm, I'm prepared. Um, there was something else I wanted to say which I forgot. You have listed 19 uh, judgments outstanding. Yes, our acting judge president. I'd like to explain so how, that. Yes. Um, just a little bit of background. In the CCMA, the kind of work that we do um, is demanding in terms of time. When you finish an arbitration, whether it was a one-day arbitration or for over 40 days arbitrations like I've done, you have 10 days in which to issue your award. Uh, if you ask for an extension, you get only seven days more, and that is it. You have to get it out. That's the le legislative uh, requirement. And I have never, ever issued an award late. I'm, I pride myself on timekeeping, uh, being industrious, like I said, and working very hard. When I was um, in the high court, um, the entire time I never had late uh, judgments. Um, the labor court is where I wanted to go and get some more experience. And those judgments that you see in the list came from eight weeks of work. Eight weeks of work gave me that number of reserve judgments. You have to take into account that the role for the week had about well, let's talk about the motion court for labor court. Every week on a Friday had between 20 and 25 cases, which I prepared for and handled, and a lot of them were opposed on that role. But for, from Monday to Thursday, I dealt with reviews, and they were opposed reviews and other opposed applications. If you've seen a review file from the CCMA, it comes to you in a box with lever arch files of records. I did those every day for eight weeks, for the eight weeks that I was there. And um, unfortunately, I couldn't keep up with read, reading the records. There were some cases, one or sometimes one or two cases per day. So I accumulated these judgments from eight weeks of work in the, in the labor court. I spoke to the uh, judge president, Judge Wagley, and he was very sympathetic to me on this. And he apologized to me to say that he didn't realize that this was how, it's going, how, how busy it was. And um, in addition to that work, the reviews and the motion court, in the afternoon I would get a call at 3 o'clock or 4 o'clock for urgence, which required an order by the next morning. I was able to overnight have a written judgment out for the next morning for complex urgent opposed. Um, so, when, when I was filling my application for this post, it, it was very painful for me to write that I had so many judgments outstanding because it would be a poor reflection on my work ethic. But, um, and of course, it was picked up by LSSA. Uh, but I do have a good explanation for it. It was a very, very busy court. There were only two judges. That was my load of work. The other judge had her own load of work. And that's what happened. Mr. Sherrod, are those judgments still outstanding? I've, uh, out of all of them, I've got three left, which um, I, I've spoken to Judge Wagley, and he's quite happy for me to hand them down within the next two weeks. But again, I must explain that while I was handing down those judgments, I've been busy in the um, high court in January in a criminal trial with 67 witnesses. I managed to complete the trial, but judgment is going to be handed down in July. It was, we finished the evidence on the last day, probably in the last hour. And then I did motion court, um, um, not motion, uh, civil court for the next, the last session that I uh, was in the high court. And I've picked up a few ju uh, reserve judgments from there, but I also handed down extemporaries in appeals and in my motion court matters. 
So, would you agree, would you <coughs> agree with this, this statement uh, by uh, LSA that you, in the light of these judgments, we are not ready uh, for appointment, for permanent appointment? Definitely, I don't agree with that acting judge president because I've just explained how my work ethic, um, if I have to present something by tomorrow morning, I will stay awake tonight to have it out. Those um, judgments, there's a, there's a special explanation for that, and it is the first time in my life that I was faced with that situation because of the work that came so fast and furious. Okay, in the high court, do you have any outstanding yeah, judgment? I've got, I've got uh, four opposed motions and uh, one trial judgment um, and one appeal, but I've handed down the rest. So how old are those It's from judgments? the session that we just finished last week, the week before last. So not older than three months? No, no acting judge president. And they are all in various stages of um, f finalization because when you go into uh, an opposed motion, you've got your judgment three quarter written because you've looked at the heads of argument of both parties and you've researched everything. It's just that last bit that, uh, you, just to finalize it and just to tidy it up. Okay, you just alluded to that, uh, the skill you are bringing with you to the bench is the conflict resolution skill. Yes, Acting Judge President. And also the GCB also has indicated that you, you have also a social and administrative justice skill. Yes, Acting Judge President. And lastly, it is stated that your appointment will enhance the gender representativity in the branch. Do you agree with that? I, I agree with that, Acting Judge President. So do you know, maybe you can explain how that, uh, how, how will that appointment in terms achieve of, that purpose? In terms of gender representativity? Yeah. Well, um, I think the Peter Maritzburg Court um, accounted, but, um, I know that you have an Indian male, or you don't have an Indian female in Peter Maritzburg. Uh, you don't have a white female either. Um, and I don't think you have a colored female. Yeah, so we, uh, and as far as, I, there, is, um, there is a need for an Indian female. Okay, thank you, uh, Chief Justice. Uh, thank you, before <laughs> I I give the MEC the opportunity. Uh, Ms. Hiralal, uh, did you say some of those judgments in that list uh, have been handed down? In the list, in the long list from the, the Labor Court. Labor Court uh, reserve judgments. Yes, Chief Justice, I've got a list of... Um... Can, 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 are you able to give me information as to which one was handed down when, because it's a very concerning list. It's quite long. And, been... uh, and uh, if, for example, some of those that were reserved from August are still outstanding, no. that means they have been outstanding for about nine months. No, no. So I'm keen <laughs> to know when were they handed down. Um. The August ones were handed down within the three-month period. It was the October and the November ones uh, which accumulated. Sorry? It was October and November judgments that accumulated more. The August ones, if... Uh, which which ones in that list have not been handed down? Just the last few from the end of November. Uh, when you say the last few, that's from when? I, I see you. you. I'm not sure what document you are looking at, Chief Justice. Can I look at the same document so okay, I can explain okay, no, to you? Okay, no, I'm sorry, maybe. You see, on page 20 of the questionnaire, which is paginated, page 40, it says, please list any reserve judgment still outstanding and the dates on which the judgment was reserved. But actually, I realize that you, you don't specify the the names of the cases, 
but you have got uh, you have got uh, dates there. It says none from the High Court, and then it says Labour Court. It gives a number of dates, but uh, which must be dates on which they were reserved. But you don't specify the names of the cases. Uh, page 20 and yes, 21, uh, it's pages 20 and 21 of the questionnaire, which are paginated page, pages 40 and 41. Yes, Chief Justice. Um, are you there? I'm looking at it. It's, yeah, it's page 41 in the, in the booklet. Yes. Well, you didn't put the names of the cases. How come? I didn't think that I needed to. I, I put the dates. Um, but, but the question is at least any reserved judgment still outstanding and the dates on which the judgments, judgment was reserved. I'm, I must apologize. I didn't realize. So I, I put the date. I thought that was important. It could be traced back, and I didn't think. Yeah, but if, we, if, if somebody prior to this hearing wanted to check whether those judgments have been handed down, how would they... Uh, check if you don't if you don't put didn't put the names of the parties and the case numbers. I have At my. At least if you didn't put the case numbers, but you put the names of the parties, I would understand. But one would expect that you'd put the names of the parties and the case numbers. So if any commissioner wanted to investigate this before the hearing, they could get. Uh, uh, get hold of the registrar of the Labour Court and say, case uh, number so-and-so, has judgment been handed down? Case number so-and-so, has it been handed down? But without you putting those names of the parties and case number, nobody could check. I take your point, Chief Justice. I have my laptop outside. Oh, it's right here. I could open it and just tell you which three. Well, that, w that won't help now, but it just seems to me to us to have something obvious. That's what the questioner said. It said, list the list, please list any reserved judgments uh, are still outstanding and the dates on which the judgment was reserved. I see that. So, so when you tell me uh, maybe the last three cases have been uh, uh, handed down, the judgments have been handed down. I don't have any way of checking with the Registrar of the Labour Court or the JP whether uh, those cases, those judgments have in fact been handed down because I don't have the names of the parties, I don't have the case number. I I appreciate that, Chief Justice. Uh, he will have a list now in the sense that I did, um, I submitted my own list because I was so concerned that um, the LSSA had raised this. And, and it also means the legal bodies would not have been able to check this. Do you appreciate that? I understand. Mm. Okay, okay, all right. You, you are done, uh, Acting Judge President. I think you are done. Uh, MEC? Well, Chief Justice, I think uh, I've been covered uh, on the question I wanted to ask around the reserve judgments. That's thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, Commissioner Nochesi? Just a follow up. Sorry, in, in this issue of the reserve judgment. Uh, please raise your voice. In, in respect of this reserve judgment, I draw your attention to the note after that long list where you say without detracting from the importance of handing down judgment as soon as possible I would like to offer an explanation for the delay in handing down the above judgments the two judgments not handed down since August 2021 are due to be handed down this week I had a heavy load and then there was explanation I can't accept this explanation that to say this, and, and I saw a long list of judgments from the Labour Court that are simple, not handed down, and you seem to be one of those. What is your comment on that? Because here is clear, and this questionnaire you sign on the 6th of December, and you don't have these judgments. Why should we just ignore that? Commissioner, uh, those were very complicated 
cases in the sense that the records were very long. Um, I also, in that time, um, between the October and November stints, I went to the CCMA to complete part herds, which are also part of my social justice mandate, because those part herds cannot sit indefinitely. I completed part herds and I also wrote judgments under those strict timelines. I also handed down a criminal court judgment on the 20, around the 24th of September, which was from a very long trial. So there was a lot that I was doing in that time, and I've given the best explanation that I can in terms of how heavy that workload was. And uh, I do have the support of the judge president from the labor court who um, actually apologized at that time saying that he was not able to send uh, an additional judge, bearing in mind the number of urgents that were coming up as well. They were Thank you, Chief Justice. Urgent. I'm, I'm come covered. You're but, covered. Thank uh, you. But we are treating that court with disdain. Sorry to say. You, you, you see, I was going to raise this question that uh, it's strange that you should have had so many reserved judgments in the labor court, which is the field that you have been really involved in for, for, for so long. After since 2000 or thereabout, although you were a CCMA commissioner, but that's the labor law field. But in the high court, you don't have any. And it's maybe what Commissioner Nuches is saying, maybe it must be looked at. Maybe you are giving uh, a priority to the high court work and not the labor court. Because it's not so, Chief Justice. Maybe it's not that. I'm just saying when one looks at that, one would have expected that when it comes to labor law work, which is what the labor court uh, cases are about, you would be quicker to hand down judgments because you are very familiar with that, with, with that field. We have had, from, your, from, from, from what you have said, then when it comes to high court and magistrate's court, since about 1996, you, you have not appeared in court uh, as a lawyer, because you decided to um, do CCM industrial court and CCMA work and preside and be a commissioner. So it, in terms of non-labor, that, that's where one could have expected that maybe uh, you would have reserve judgments, but you didn't have reserve judgments there and had a, a long list of reserve judgments in the labor court. It gives the impression, maybe it's wrong, it gives the impression as if you gave priority to the high court uh, cases than the labor court cases, but it may be that factually that's not the case. It's not the but case, But that's Chief the impression Justice. that one gets. Not at all. Um, I must emphasize that the reviews were one or two a day. The reviews involve long transcripts for each case. And then at the end of the week on a Friday, there's a motion roll of 20 to 25 cases out of which you will pick up another one or two opposed on contempt, etc. So the workload was very, very high. It was very demanding. I put in my best effort. There were times I would go without sleep in order to have the urgent orders out. Had I filed or submitted an application before I did the labor court, I would not have had this uh, issue to have to answer to today. But it's the nature of the work in the labor court that caused me to uh, uh, accumulate this number of judgments. But like I said, on the other side, where I have only 10 days in which to issue the most complex awards, I've not ever had a single late award. And that could have been checked by um, any of the commissioners as well with the CCMA, where we have even more stringent deadlines. Uh. Okay, um, I don't see any hands. Let me check the commissioners who are attending virtually. Is there any commissioner who has a question to put to, to the witness, to the candidate? 
The questions from me, CJ. Uh, Commission, Commissioner Barnett. No questions. Thank you. No questions. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you, Commissioner Brayton Barr. No questions, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner Shabangum Dawe. Thank you, Commissioner Baloy. You have a question. Thank you, thank you, Chair. Good afternoon, ma'am. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Yes, I must say that I, I, I am concerned when you, when you answer the the concern that you lack experience in the way that you do, that uh, you actually do have experience and you are good to go. Now, your, your experience, it has been established from your application, is largely in labor law, right? Now, uh, that, 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 that area of a law applies completely different principle, principles, rather, principles of equity, right? That's, that's what applies there. You come now to what we call uh, court of law, which applies different principles, and one would expect that someone with your kind of background, which is steeped in, 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 in the labor, um, in labor jurisprudence, that someone with your background will recognize that in the high court, it's a different field and I do require to get myself steeped in, 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 in the principles that apply there and the reasoning, the jurisprudence that apply there. And, and I've looked at one of your judgments and I have put what I see as, as, as if you like, errors uh, in reasoning, in how you express things. It's a criminal matter. You speak about beyond all doubt instead of reasonable doubt. Um, you, you speak about, you, you don't engage um, contentions about circumstantial evidence in support of the, of the state's case for, for pre-planned murder. I think it's a case of Nogunda or somebody like that. You don't engage those principles and concepts. And I put it down to, uh, it, it's a different field altogether. And I can understand how someone who's coming in on an acting basis would make these kind of errors. They are finding their way. Um, and in good time, you know, you will, you will find your feet and not make these kind of common errors, what I would consider to be common errors. So I am concerned when you don't acknowledge um, that the periods of acting that you have had, of course they are not sufficient to, to have you say, I am good to go. I don't, I don't need to do anything more. Oh, what do no, you say to I, that? I, sorry, Commissioner. I do, need, I do need to learn a lot more um, what I've learned um, when I came back to civil litigation in 2017, um, remember I practiced 1996 just at the time we were getting our new democracy. Um, I was pleasantly surprised with the changes in the law, in foreclosure, in, um, in um, sorry, uh, in foreclosure and all those kinds of disputes. And I, I voraciously read in order to acquaint my, reacquaint myself and, and to infuse into the knowledge that I had from the previous kind of law that we practiced, the, the values of the Constitution that are now uh, infused in the work that we do with contracts and, uh, yes, um, so, it, for me, it was learning. I came back and I learned. I had to read a lot. I had to research a lot. And I had to prepare a lot before my cases. But I've come to a stage where I'm able to uh, recognize immediately what the, the issues are. Uh, Rule 46A, immediately I know what I'm supposed to be doing. Uh, default judgments for um, repossession of vehicles. I know the case authorities that must be applied and how to deal with those. So I know how to apply the law. Where my shortcomings are, I'm still prepared to research and learn. And I would love to be able to also attend um, a such a training. Um, I'm not saying that I know everything. Uh, I have been very upfront with uh, the, the, uh, my history. But I do have serious potential 
to be a good judge and to make a good contribution to our judiciary. Oh, thank because you. Because of the work that I've done in the past and my ability to identify what the needs and issues are in a case. Thank you. Thank you, CJ. Thank you, Commissioner Maloy, Commissioner Klaba. Yes, no, thank you very much, uh, CJ, and uh, good afternoon, uh, uh, Ms. Uh, Hiralan. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Yes, thanks, Yulas. I observe, <laughs> and maybe from your, your, your presentation, you last practiced in 1996. You then rose from the CCMA to the bench, albeit on an acting basis. And uh, in view of the comments that have been made uh, this afternoon, uh, I want to ask you this question. Have you considered making yourself available for a judgeship post in the, in the labor court? Thank you, Commissioner. Um, I know that I'm seen as um, that's where I belong, but my heart is in this, and that is why I have worked as hard as I have since 2017 until now to, to learn and to reacquaint myself with the law that I have missed out on. I've missed out on it uh, also not through my own doing. Um, it's, if you look at the, my CV and my history, I uh, qualified at the time as an attorney and as a conveyancer on the same day. I wrote both those exams during my articles. I envisaged a very bright future for myself. Unfortunately, I was not able to secure work with the banks or anything because I did not have a big trust account and I did not have financial backing, uh, having come from disadvantaged background. Um, when labor presented itself because of my family and my history and um, the way um, we are, it's, it's what I did and I came to love it. I, I do love it very much. I, I do my work with an absolute passion in the CCMA and I'm recognized for that. But I'm also a lawyer. And when I came to the High Court in 2017, I spoke openly about how wonderful it has been to come back and feel like a lawyer again. Uh, and I've, I, it's. Let me remind you to I've be crisp. I've worked very hard. Thank you, Chief Justice. I've worked very hard and I have learned a lot. That's not to say that I don't have more to learn, but I know where to find the law. I'm hardworking and I can do it. Uh, thank you, Commissioner Klaba. Commissioner Pillay. Thank you, Chief Justice. I intend to be brief. Uh, good afternoon, Ms. Arina. Good afternoon, Commissioner. Um, can I ask you to look at the superstar judgment? And before I pose my questions to you, I should indicate that I have a similar concern that, uh, that Commissioner Beloy has in terms of the reasoning of your judgment. And, and I'll just demonstrate very quickly to you why I say so. So the superstar Which judgment page, was, Commissioner? Um, it begins at paginated page 304. Yes, so, so this, this application is an urgent application um, for quite complex relief. Um, it's an interim interdict, it's a spoliation, um, as well as a declaratory order. Correct? Yes. Um, but what I noticed once I read your judgment is that you don't make a finding on urgency, which is a basic finding that needs to be made. And I just want to show you if you go to paragraph 59 of your judgment. You see, you say in paragraph 59, the applicant's lengthy delays in bringing the application and her failure to act despite having knowledge that her access to the estate was blocked or lead, to conclude, or lead one to conclude that, I would have, ima I would have imagined you're going to find self-created urgency and strike. But instead you go then into the merits of the declaratory order. I did so find, on the facts um, you make a finding that, that seems to imply that, that the matter is not urgent, but you don't deal with the question of urgency. Commissioner, I did uh, deal with the question of urgency somewhere earlier in the judgment where I said that um, 
the, the applicant allowed a lot of time to pass before she brought the application. Yes. But uh, these applications are by their very nature urgent yes, because of the nature of the relief that is being sought. From paragraph 18. See, that, that's exactly my difficulty. So one is not clear if you're finding that the matter is not urgent or that it is urgent. You're saying on the one hand that there's self-created urgency, and on the other hand you're saying, and that can only be in relation to the spoliation relief, that it's by its very nature urgent. And even that principle is not 100% correct because there are certain instances where even spoliation proceedings, in order for it to be uh, ordinarily urgent, you would need to bring yourself within the four corners of a spoliation application, uh, which you found that, that, sh that the applicant didn't in fact do. So yeah, that default I, position I on urgency, point. yeah, so the default position on urgency wouldn't apply. You would have to go into whether or not the matter was urgent. And what you seem to find in paragraph 59 is that it wasn't urgent because there was self-created urgency. Yes. That's the first problem. The second difficulty that I have is how you apply the plascon evans test. And if you look at paragraph 63 of your judgment, um, you deal with the test. Firstly, you say that it is tried that although the relief in a spoliation action is temporary, pending a final decision in an action, the nature of the order is final, which is correct. But then further down in paragraph 64, you say that the third line, it raises a dispute of fact which cannot be resolved on the papers. Now, for anyone who reads that, the next line should be, so I'm referring the matter for oral evidence because you've now find that there's an irresolvable dis dispute of fact. Yes, Instead, I've learned since then, Commissioner, yes, that sorry. that is wrong. <laughs> okay, so you accept that it is correct. I, correct. I concede. All right. But okay. I have learned from that. Sure. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Chief Justice. Thank you. Uh, I think we have come to the end of uh, this interview. Uh, thank you very much, uh, Ms. Hiralal, for making yourself available. I'm going to give you three minutes. If you have two or three points that you want to emphasize to the commissioners as points that they should particularly bear in mind when they consider your candidature, but if you feel that uh, issues have been adequately addressed, that will be fine as well. Thank you, Chief Justice. Uh, just a few points. Um, the kind of cases that I picked out um, for uh, and attached to my application were meant to show um, that I have a certain kind of perception for people's rights and um, that, that comes from my background in the CCMA and for all people. The Noguda case, if, if you look at it, came to me as an ordinary murder case um, and it took some perception to understand that it involved an LGBTQ kind of case. Uh, and uh, it was well received um, by the LGBTQ community because the trial ran as if it was a murder trial, straightforward, but um, it recognized that there are other, um, I'm just trying to count remember which other ones there, but um, that's the kind of point that I was making with the judgments that I submitted. I have done a lot of judgments on contract, et cetera. They, um, they are there. The acting judge president would have seen my records. Um, for me, um, I, be I believe that the, the judiciary will benefit from my experience in as much as I haven't had the civil litigation uh, experience until 2017. I am teachable. Um, Sajay is there to provide opportunities. Um, um, the judiciary provides opportunities, equal opportunities. I missed out for many years because of my circumstances and, the, uh, and I went into work with the CCMA only, but that was not by choice. It was the kind of work I also only received. But I made a huge commitment to social justice. It is recognized in the CCMA. Even from the judgments that I wrote in the labor court, I sincerely apologize for not writing the case numbers, but you have my assurance that there's only three that are outstanding, which will go out in the next week, or at least week to 10 days, because there are other judgments too. Um, 
there are people, my, my judgments when I write them, uh, except for the mistakes that I've made that uh, advocates for transformation have pointed out, and uh, Commissioner Baloi, um, they tend to also teach. And my labor court judgments have been used twice during this year by the CCMA in um, the monthly case law monitors where they um, use it for professional development and education. The three so, minutes is up. Thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank, you. thank you for availing thank yourself. Thank you, Chief Justice. You are now excused. Thank you.